Okay, so here I'm going to explain uh, how we use a photo gate to measure the launch speed of our ping pong balls. So when we uh, launch the ping pong ball, uh, the ping pong ball passes through this black object here, and that's a photo gate. And that's Miles barking, so we'll try to ignore him. So I want to explain uh, how the photo gate works. So here's the basic idea. The photo gate uh, consists of a what's called an IR LED, an infrared emitter. So that is a source of infrared light, light that uh, you can't quite see with your eyes. And the um, IR LED emits a beam of light that travels across the photo gate. And uh, it's aimed right at a detector that can sense infrared light. And uh, that detector is connected to an Arduino. And the Arduino is running a program. And basically uh, what goes on is the, um, the Arduino can sense whether or not the detector is detecting a, a beam of light. So when the ping pong ball comes through the gate and blocks the beam, the Arduino can start a timer running. And when the uh, ping pong ball is finished traversing the beam, the Arduino can sense that and stop the timer. And it can measure the amount of time that it took from when the beam, when the ping pong ball first blocked the beam to when it stopped blocking the beam. And that gives you uh, a time. And if you know the dimension, this distance, this dimension of the ping pong ball, if you know the time and that distance, you can calculate what the speed would be. So that's the basic idea. So mathematically, um, the idea is that if we know the diameter of the ping pong ball, which we call it uh, D, and the Arduino is measuring the amount of time that the beam is blocked for, we'll call that time T block, then the launch speed of the ball can just be calculated by dividing D, the distance traveled, it takes an amount of time, T block to travel that distance. So dividing D by T block gives you the launch speed. Now there are a couple of issues, uh, things you have to be careful of uh, when you're making this measurement. One is of course the ping pong ball is a three dimensional object. And we measure the diameter of the ping pong ball. But in order for this scheme to work, uh, you have to make sure that the uh, elevation of the beam uh, matches exactly the center of the ping pong ball. So there's a lot of care taken to place the photo gate so that the uh, location of the beam exactly uh, coincides with the center of the ball and that it doesn't move during the measurement. The board, if it flexes, it can move and that, that'll throw things off. So that's one complication. There's another complication. Uh, and that arises from the fact, it, it's a small complication, but it's one that we can deal with. It arises from the fact that um, the infrared beam actually has uh, a finite width to it. This uh, distance between here and here is just a, a couple of millimeters typically. And that uh, introduces uh, a little bit of a complication. And, and here's the idea. The way the um, detector works is, in order for the uh, uh, IR detector to sense that the ball has, is blocking the beam, it's really wired in such a way that you have to really completely block the beam. So the place where the timer starts is right in this position here, right when the ball completely blocks the beam. And as the ball goes through, it turns out that the unblocked state will be sensed right as the bottom of the ball just begins to um, uh, allow some light through. So the blocking starts at this point, the unblocking is sensed right at this point. And if you think about it, the, the effective diameter of the ball is really not the ball's actual diameter, it's the actual diameter of the ball minus the width of the infrared beam. So if an infrared beam, if the ball has typically, um, a ping pong ball has a diameter of about 40 millimeters and the beam is two millimeters, the effective uh, diameter of the ping pong ball is going to be 40 minus two or about 38 millimeters. So 
there's a simple procedure, which I'll now explain, that you can use to actually measure uh, the effective diameter of the ping pong ball that you're going to use in calculating the launch speed. And here's how it works. Okay, so um, these yellow rectangles here represent strips of paper. And uh, this is the platform of the launcher. So you take one narrow strip of paper and you tape it down to the platform. And then you take the other strip of paper and you, with a little thing of uh, a loop of tape, you can take the ping pong ball and stick it uh, to this strip of paper somewhere. It doesn't matter where. And then you put a little uh, reference mark with a pen uh, somewhere on the strip of paper. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to move the ping pong ball until it blocks the beam. And you can monitor what's going on in terms of whether the beam is blocked or not by looking at this LED that's on the Arduino. The uh, Arduino program is written so that as soon as the beam is blocked, as soon as it detect a block, detects a blocked beam, this LED lights up. So here's the idea. You take uh, the ping pong ball, you're pulling on the strip of paper, and you're moving it until you just... Uh, see the LED light up. And that will happen, as we said, right when the beam is fully blocked. Okay? So at this point, the LED has lit, lit up, and all you want to do at this point is to put a little mark on the fixed strip of paper, marking the point at which uh, the blocking started. And then you're going to keep going until the LED goes off. And that's going to occur right when the beam, the begin, beam just begins to become unblocked. So, and at this point, you want to put a mark where the unblocking occurs. And then uh, the difference at this point, you're done, uh, except you just have to measure with a ruler the distance between these two marks on your fixed strip of paper, and that'll give you the effective diameter of the ball. And as we said, uh, because of the fact that um, uh, the unblocking occurs right when the beam starts to be uh, visible, uh, the effective diameter of the ball is going to be the actual diameter of the ball minus the width of the infrared beam. And that's what you should get just by going through this procedure and measuring the distance between these two marks. Right, so what we just said is the distance between these two marks, I'm gonna call D effective. And we just argued that D effective is equal to the actual diameter of the ball. That's, this is D actual minus the width of the IR beam. That's this width here. And that's typically on the order of two millimeters. So you should find uh, for a 40 millimeter um, uh, diameter a ping pong ball, the effective uh, diameter is going to be something like 38 millimeters. And then once you have that, the way you get the launch speed, the launch is just calculated by taking the effective and dividing it by the amount of time that the infrared beam is blocked. So T block is, that's what's being measured by the Arduino program. It's timing the amount of time uh, that the beam is blocked and you can get the launch speed, I spell launch properly, uh, just by dividing the effective diameter of the ball divided by this time T block. And actually the program that's running on the Arduino uh, we'll pretty much do this for you. You just have to type in what the effective diameter of your ping pong ball is into the program, and um, and it will do this division for you and actually give you the, the
launch speed printed out in the serial monitor. 